And so I'm going to take you on a journey really quickly. If you were to go to my website right now, and uh, uh oh, my thing's not working. Why is my uh oh? I'm sorry, y'all. Okay. If you go to my website right now, you go to visionxy.com. One of the things that you would discover is you would discover that not only have I traveled to 49 different states and reached hundreds of people all across the country as a national speaker, but one of the things that you would discover is you would discover that I've written seven books, uh, I've appeared on television, I'm president of the Circle of Change Leadership Experience, and I attained my doctoral degree in organizational leadership. And that's all wonderful stuff, and that's all amazing stuff, and it's incredible accomplishments, and I'm very grateful, and I'm very thankful for all those accomplishments. But what you would not know is in the midst of this journey, in the midst of this opportunity, there's been a lot of challenges as well. And that's just when I was three years old, my parents got divorced. From about the age of eight, from about the age of three to all the way up until I graduated high school, I came from a single parent household. At the age of eight until about the age of 15, I literally had to take care of myself. I had to cook my own meals. I had to learn how to be a responsible young kid because my mother had to work long hours. As I went throughout this journey, I had to transfer high school because the school that I was at said I wasn't good enough to be a starter on the basketball team. Thankfully, though, when I transferred, I went on to college. And when I went on to college, I had to take a remedial English class because they said my writing wasn't good enough to write at a collegiate level. Let alone, I had a professor tell me that your writing is not good enough to get a master's, let alone a doctorate. But we proved him wrong. Got a master's, a doctorate, and wrote seven books. At the age of 19, I had this aspiration to be this national basketball player. And I remember I walked out for the team and literally got cut one person short of making the team. And so I dealt with failure. I dealt with rejection. I dealt with uh, 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 expectations being broken. And you would think that the challenges would stop, but they continue. I had this desire to be a speaker, but I had to deal with rejection. I had to deal with failure. I had to deal with being overlooked, undervalued. And people literally not giving me an opportunity because of the color of my skin. I don't know if you've ever been there before, but literally there's been moments in my life because of my culture, because of what I represent, because I'm a black man, because people get intimidated that literally there were certain opportunities I was not able to attain. And so in the midst of all these challenges and all these obstacles, I still persevered. I still continue to push forward. But I got to be honest with you, in the journey of wanting to be a speaker and wanting to make a difference and wanting to inspire people, there were moments where I felt I wasn't good enough. There were moments I had low self-esteem. There were moments I dealt with imposter syndrome. There were moments where I was at the beach and I was in tears and I was asking God a simple question. Is this really what I'm supposed to do? I just want to share that with you because a lot of times when you go to Instagram, when you go to Facebook, when you go to LinkedIn, we show all the good stuff. And that's good because that's a part of branding. But if I was to be honest with you, there's a story behind what you see. There's a process behind greatness. In essence, this is not an overnight thing. It's a process of tears. It's a process of being challenged. It's a process of uncertainty. It's a process of wanting to give up. It's a process of wanting to throw in the towel. It's a process of being in the moment for I'm not sure how I'm going to make it through, how I'm going to do my dissertation, how I'm going to graduate, let alone how am I going to pay the bills. There was a process because, see, when I started my business, I didn't get a loan. I didn't have finances from an organization. I didn't have parents that gave me money to start my business. I started my speaking business with bad credit in college debt. Oh, let's talk about this today. Can we talk about this today before I get going? I started literally my business in debt, bad credit, but I was willing to persevere. I was willing to work hard. And because of my ability to navigate to endure, to persevere, and to make it in my mind, I was going to let nothing stop me from reaching my fullest potential. I can stand here today and say that I'm living the dream. I'm walking in purpose. I'm walking in what I was called to do. I'm able to make my mark in the world because I allowed my vision to be bigger than the challenges I had to go through. And this is what I know, and I know you know this as well. If we're going to succeed, if we're going to reach our fullest potential, 
We're going to have to be able to get through challenges. We're going to have to get through obstacles. There's going to be some very low moments. There's going to be some moments I'm ready to throw in the towel. There's going to be some moments I'm ready to give up. Those moments are going to happen, especially as a black man in America. It's going to happen. But you got to understand, in the midst of the adversity, there's still a light. There's still some principles. There's still some truths that will enable us to overcome. And the reason I was able to overcome, the reason I'm able to move forward in the midst of all the challenges, in the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of the racial injustice, the reason I'm able to move forward is because I've learned some success principles. I've learned some principles of success, not only through research, not only through reading, not only through listening, and not only through sitting there and listening to the words of my elders, but more importantly, also just through studying culture, society, and nature, I've learned some lessons as well.